So in the, in the method of images, the very first thing that we discuss, we discuss the simplest case means charge outside a material and then it induces an image charge there. And we calculated the force of attraction, the surface charge density, and then we moved to a point charge near a grounded conducting sphere. We consider a sphere and then we place the point charge near that one such that the surface of the potential was a zero potential. And for that we calculated the potential, we calculated the force of attraction between the source charge and the image charges and the surface charge density as well. We plotted that result and a lot of intuition was there, some limiting cases we put there. The limiting cases were that what happens at the short distances in it, long distances. For short distances we came to know that it is the usual Coulombic attractive force while for the long distances it was the modified Coulomb force which was 1 over r cube. Now we will discuss that what will be the situation when we will consider the previous geometry means a point charge near a conducting sphere but now this conducting sphere we will not make is grounded. It will be in isolated which you call the insulated sphere and it will have a certain charge on it. So it will be a charged insulated conducting sphere and the charge will be Q on this sphere. So the point charge, the point charge Q near a conducting, near a charged, near a charged insulated conducting sphere and this sphere, the charge on this sphere will be actually Q. Here. So now we will design our geometry and the geometry is like this is sphere and the rest of the parameters will be the same like this is a sphere of radius A and we are giving a source charge here which was Q and this was at distance Y from the center and you remember that it caused an image charge which was Q prime and this was at Y prime distance and we observed at point P which was at a distance X from the center of this sphere. Now if I say that phi is non-zero on the surface then it means that this sphere is having some charge on its surface and that by symmetry, I will consider that let's say that charge is just on the center of it. In reality, <coughs> the charge is actually on the surface of this sphere. But for mathematical calculation, I will consider this charge at the center of this sphere. Then our mathematical calculation will be easier. So we are actually having two charges 
actually three charges now. One is our source charge, which is causing an induced charge Q prime, and then a charge on the surface of this sphere, which is Q double prime. <coughs> and we will now write the number of charges here. So, what about Q prime? You know the Q prime is equal from the previous. Q prime was equal to minus Q A over Y. This was the Q prime value. Because Q prime is the induced charge due to Q. And what about Q double prime? Q double prime is actually the charge which is the charge on the sphere is Q minus Q prime. So from here, capital Q, which is charge on the sphere, will be equal to the sum of two charges, which is Q prime and Q double prime, because the surface of the sphere is actually having this much charge. This is the induced charge and this is the charge we have considered on the surface of the sphere. So the total charge on the surface of the sphere is actually Q, which is the sum of Q prime and Q double prime. Clear? This is the charge on the surface of the sphere. So put the value of Q prime here. So this will be, if I put the value of Q prime, then this will be minus minus will become plus and this will become Q over Q A over Y. Now the potential, you can now count down the distances. The distance from the center to this point Q, this is equal to Y. And the distance from here to here, from the center to this point is x. So what is the distance from the source to the point? It will be, for the Q charge, it will be y minus x, while for the Q prime, it will be y, uh, y prime minus x, while for the Q double prime, this distance will be just x because we have considered this at the center. So the potential outside the sphere, the potential, the potential outside the sphere means a point, a point x due to due to q q prime and q double prime this potential will be phi of x which is equal to k times the potential due to the source charge q is x minus y plus the potential due to Q prime which will be KQ prime and X minus Y prime absolute plus the potential due to Q double prime and this is Q double prime divided by X absolute. So this is the potential due to the three charges and now I can write by putting the value of y prime here phi of x will be equal to k and this will be q over x minus y plus this will be now this will be because Q prime is equal to minus Q A over Y, so I will write Q A over Y divided by X minus Y prime. And I can put the value of Y prime as well. From previous, what was Y prime? Y prime was equal to A square over Y square. 
then means this was a square over y, so I can write this thing is x minus a square over y square, and here I will write y vector. If I write this a square, then y, then it's the same thing. And plus this will be the q double one is q plus q a over y divided by x. So this is the potential due to the three charges. Now what's the difference between the previous geometry and this geometry? The only difference is that the earlier geometry was having a grounded sphere. Potential was on the surface equal to zero. While this is now not a grounded sphere but a charged sphere. And this is insulated so the charge is not flowing anywhere. And now this sphere compared to the previous sphere is having only this charge on it is additional charge. So the surface charge of this will be the charge per unit area of the sphere. So what about sigma? Sigma will be the previous plus an additional term. An additional term will be the <coughs> additional surface charge sigma will be equal to q double prime by 4 pi a square. This is the additional charge. So if I write the previous sigma, this is in addition to that one, this will be the additional charge to that one. The previous sigma was the surface charge that we derived was q by 4 pi a square and then a over y a square over y square minus 1 whole divided by 1 plus a square over y square minus 2a over y and cos of theta and this is 3 over 2 and the additional surface charge density means the additional charge is q double prime so I will write the value of q double prime from here which is q plus q a over y divided by 4 pi a squared now this is the induced surface charge density and now I will find the force of attraction. Now this charge is being attracted by Q prime as well as Q double prime. So there will be no two terms. Earlier there was only the interaction of Q with Q prime. Now it will be the interaction of Q with Q prime plus Q and Q double prime. We will use the principle of superposition first of this one with this one and then of this one with this one. There is another term as well and that term is of these two as well. Q prime with Q double prime. But we are only talking of the force of interaction of the source charge with its induced charges, right? So we will only count this and the force of interaction will be F and this is, let me write Q with it. So what it will be? It will be K 
and Q with Q double prime divided by what's about the distance between Q and Q double prime? One minus one. The distance between Q and Q double prime. Q double prime is at the center and Q is here. So the distance is y. Right? Distance is y squared. Right? Plus K and then Q with Q double prime divide by this one was Q prime, yes. This is Q prime. And this is equal. What's about the distance between the Q and Q prime? It is y minus y prime and square of it. So I will write this is the magnitude. So these are the forces between uh, the force of attraction between the two. And now let me write this thing f of f of q is enough in a Victorian form is equal to k which is taken as common q and put the value of q double prime q double prime is equal to q plus q a over y divide by now this is y squared and this is plus now q and what about q prime q prime i can write minus q a over y divide by y minus a squared over y Oh, it's good.